What's up future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're going to break down the very, very most basic elements of an introduction to mechanical ventilation. Things we're going to build upon as we move through this series focused on modes of mechanical ventilation. Let's dive in. Okay, so we're gonna dive into a mechanical ventilation series here that's gonna take us down the road from the basics of mechanical ventilation down each mode of mechanical ventilation. Now you cannot understand each mode of mechanical ventilation without understanding these basic principles of mechanical ventilation. So today, and in this segment, all I plan on doing is giving you some key terminology that you need to recognize along with some key principles that you have to understand about mechanical ventilation, okay? Now, when we're gonna start with terminology, so what you see here on the board here is I got three key words, and you need to understand what these three key words tell you about what's happening during mechanical ventilation. Trigger is what begins or what starts inspiration, okay? Now, we're going to talk about trigger here in just a second in a little bit more in-depth uh, uh, segment. But for right now, just know that trigger is the element or the variable in which the inspiratory phase is triggered or it begins. Okay. Now, cycle is what ends inspiration. You want to be clear in these terminologies because you don't want to be a respiratory therapist out there where your vent is triggering automatically and you have all these breaths happening and you're saying, oh my gosh, the vent is auto cycling. It's auto cycling. It's not auto cycling. It's auto triggering. You understand that what begins inspiration is trigger. What ends inspiration is cycle. Okay. They're very key, distinct differences between the two. We will talk about them as we move through this next series of videos, okay? So you're gonna hear me say trigger, you're gonna hear me say cycle, and I want it to resonate in your brain what I am referring to when I say those words. Trigger begins inspiration, cycle ends inspiration, okay? And when I say ends inspiration, it also just so happens to be what begins expiration okay so understand that cycle is the end of inspiration and the beginning of exhalation okay now limits um depending on what text you're learning uh, mechanical ventilation out of limits might also be referred to as target variables it doesn't matter it's all the same thing a limit is a variable that will not be exceeded, okay? So a limit is something that the ventilator will not exceed. So if we're in volume control and we tell the ventilator to give, let's just say 500 milliliters or, or 0.5 liters tidal volume, then the ventilator is not going to give 600 mls or 0.6 liters it's going to give 500 milliliters that becomes a limit okay if you tell the ventilator to operate in pressure and you tell the vent to um, deliver 20 centimeters of water pressure then the vent will not deliver 24 centimeters of water pressure it will do exactly what you tell it to do that becomes a limit okay those are the key terms that you need to have a sound basis on as I move forward throughout each mode of mechanical ventilation over the coming weeks, okay? Now, I did tell you that I wanted to talk about trigger, and that's what we're going to do now. Remember, trigger is the variable that initiates or begins or starts inspiration. There are two sides to this. You have the vent and you have the patient. The ventilator can start a breath. The patient can also 
initiate a breath. Okay, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that 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 what happens when either is triggered. It doesn't mean that. Okay, I'm not telling you that that if the patient triggers a breath, it's going to be a spontaneous breath. That's not what I'm saying. We're going to get into this in the modes, okay? But you have to have this sound understanding that trigger is what begins inspiration and the vent can trigger a breath and the patient can trigger a breath, okay? Now, how does this work? A vent is always time triggered. It means it operates off of time. If you tell the ventilator to give the patient 10 breaths per minute, then it's going to do so in a very controlled fashion over that minute. Now, if you tell the vent to give 10 breaths per minute, that means the ventilator is going to give one breath every six seconds. Okay, well, let me say that again. You tell the vent to give 10 breaths per minute. If you do 60 seconds divided by 10, then you get six. That means that every six seconds, there is going to be a time triggered breath because the vent operates off of a time trigger. Okay. Now, without putting it on the board, if you tell the vent to give 12 breaths per minute, then the vent is going to give a breath every five seconds. How do I know that? 60 seconds divided by 12 is five seconds, okay? If you tell the vent to give a breath every 15 seconds, then you're gonna have a breath, a time triggered breath that happens every four seconds because 60 divided by 15 is four, okay? If you tell the vent to give a breath, to, to, to give a rate of 20 breaths per minute, then 60 divided by 20 is every three seconds, okay? Those are time-triggered breaths. The vent works in a very systematic manner and it will spread those breaths out equally over 60 seconds. I hope this makes sense. Now, the patient can also, in certain modes, ask or initiate or trigger a breath, okay? This happens in one of three ways. This is either going to be pressure, flow, or volume. Now I marked through volume right off the bat because I've never worked with the mechanical ventilator that operates with the option of volume trigger. It's listed in the textbooks, so I believe it's an option, but I've never seen it on a modern day ventilator, okay? If you work with one and you use volume triggering within your practice, I want you to 100% put a comment below and I want you to tell me we use volume triggering and we really like it, or we use volume triggering and we hate it. So tell me about volume trigger because I've never seen it. I've never seen it used clinically um, outside of the textbooks. I've never even heard it talked about, okay? So I'm not gonna talk about volume triggering. I am gonna talk about pressure and flow triggering, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of this right here and we're going to take this down to where the patient can trigger a breath by either pressure or flow. That's where we are, okay? So pressure or flow triggering, what's the difference? Well, with pressure, you're going to tell the vent to respond to a patient effort of minus two, minus three centimeters of water pressure, typically never more than three, okay? And what this does is the vent responds to when the diaphragm drops, you get this pressure that drops, intrathoracic pressure, and that pulls pressure out of the ventilator circuit, and it will respond to as such. So if we show a pressure waveform, if you've got a PEEP of five here, right here, and you're on minus two, the patient sucks down, the diaphragm drops, and the vent goes, oh, we're at three now. Five minus two is three. That's a minus two trigger and the vent says, give a breath. And that's what happens. So it's simply a drop in pressure out of the circuit and the vent recognizes it as the diaphragm dropping and the patient wanting a breath, okay? That's how pressure trigger works. Now flow trigger is a little more complicated. You have a ventilator, you have a patient, 
And you need to understand that this ventilator is sending out a bias flow constantly to the patient. So anytime you're in flow trigger, you also have a bias flow option. The bias flow is happening. And this bias flow is a flow that is continuously flowing through the circuit. Okay, it's not going into the patient's lungs, it's just continuously flowing out from the vent and back to the vent. Now, if you have a bias flow of five and five comes back, then that tells you that the patient is not initiating any breaths, okay? But if you have a flow trigger of two liters per minute and five goes out and three comes back, the ventilator says, oh, wait a second, I sent five out, but only three came back. The other two must be going into the patient's lungs and the patient must want a breath. It's the same concept. It's still a diaphragmatic drop. It's still the diaphragm dropping, pulling flow out of the circuit, which therefore reduces the amount that returns to the vent. And therefore the vent recognizes it as a patient trigger okay the patient is wanting a breath allow them to breathe and it will allow them to breathe now what that breath looks like varies based off of what mode you're in okay and we'll talk about that in the coming videos but for right now um, just understand that that's how flow triggering works the patient will pull a flow trigger amount out of the bias flow and when it returns back the vent will say oh I'm missing flow, the patient must be asking for a breath, okay? Now, if this breath on two liters per minute comes back and the bias flow is four, then it's not gonna give a breath. It's not gonna allow for the patient to breathe because it doesn't recognize as a loss of two liters per minute. Let's say we're on a three liter, three liter per minute flow trigger. And typically we're going two to three liters per minute flow triggering, okay? If five goes out and two comes back, the difference five to two is three, then the three is in the patient and the ventilator says, give the patient a breath or let the patient breathe. Allow the inspiratory phase to begin because the patient is triggering that inspiratory phase, okay? So you gotta understand trigger. You gotta understand time trigger, with the vent side, you gotta understand pressure and flow trigger with the patient side of things. Now pressure or flow trigger or volume trigger have no effect on the patient's time trigger, I mean on the ventilator's time trigger aspect. These are two different type of triggers that are always happening, okay? The vent is always operating off of a time trigger and the vent is always sensitive to a patient trigger and that patient trigger can be pressure flow volume okay so that's what we need to know there now from here once you understand those three terms then you are well on your way to start learning specific mechanical modes of mechanical ventilation but before we get into specific modes you have to understand that there's a difference between volume modes and pressure modes, okay? Two different types of modes of mechanical ventilation, okay? What do they tell us about what we're doing for our patient, all right? So I'm gonna break it down for you like this. If you're in volume control mode, you are controlling volume. So when I say volume, I mean tidal volume, okay? Tidal volume is set. You are controlling how much volume the ventilator pushes into the patient's lungs every single breath. Now you're going to tell the vent how long to do this and how fast to deliver this with flow or eye time. Okay? So you're also going to have a set flow or a set eye time. All right? So you got to understand that these three variables tidal volume flow and eye time are all related to one another if you tell the vent to give a tidal volume at a high flow then you're going to have a short eye time if you tell the ventilator to give a tidal volume at a lower flow then your eye time is going to be longer 
okay? Now, some vents, you set tidal volume and you set eye time. So if you set tidal volume with a long eye time, then your flow is going to be slower. It's going to be a lower level flow because to give a longer eye time, you have to deliver this set tidal volume over a longer time with a slower flow. Now, if you set a very short eye time, then the flow will be much higher because it has to deliver this tidal volume within a very short amount of time based off the eye time. And so your flow will be much higher, okay? I have another video on this. I'll, I'll link to it above and, and you can watch that also. But this is how volume, uh, tidal volume, flow, and eye time all relate to one another, okay? Um, so, so this is the basics in volume control. Of course, you're gonna have a rate set. Of course, you're gonna have a PEEP and an FL2. That doesn't differentiate between volume or pressure. So we're only talking about things that make volume, volume control, and pressure, pressure control. You set a tidal volume, you set a flow, or you set a tidal volume, you set an eye time. Those establish your initial parameters. Now, when you set those, your pressure is going to vary, okay? That means that the ventilator is focused on volume. It's not focused on pressures. So with volume, you have to understand that your pressures can vary immensely up or down. If your compliance goes down, your pressure is going to go up. Your tidal volume will remain the same. If your compliance goes down, I'm sorry, if your compliance goes up, if it increases, then your tidal volume remains the same but your pressures will go down, okay? I hope this is making sense. In regards to airway resistance, if airway resistance increases, then your volume is set, so your pressure is also going to increase. It's gonna take, it's gonna result in a higher pressure as you push that volume through that increased airway resistance. If your airway resistance decreases, then your pressures will also come down because now it's not as much pressure resulting from the set tidal volume. The key here is that in volume control, tidal volume is set, pressure will vary, okay? Now, when we, the other thing before I move on to pressure is, is that in volume control, pressure will vary but what will not vary is your minute volume. Your minute volume is set because your tidal volume is set and you have a set respiratory rate. And so the only thing the patient can do is increase minute volume from there, which means you have better control over your arterial blood gases in this mode. Why? Because you have a minimum set mandatory minute volume because you have a set respiratory rate and a set tidal volume. Now in pressure, you probably guessed this, pressure is set. Also, we set an eye time. This is also set. And what happens is we tell the vent to hold the pressure for X amount of minutes or X amount of seconds, not minutes, X amount of seconds. And what's going to vary? Volume. Volume will vary. So if compliance decreases, then your tidal volume will decrease. If compliance increases, your tidal volume will increase. If airway resistance increases, tidal volume decreases. If airway resistance decreases, then tidal volume increases, okay? So you have to understand that in pressure control, set pressure, volume varies. Now, what else is going to vary? If volume varies, then minute ventilation is also going to vary. And if that varies, then ABGs are also going to vary because you're going to have a varying minute ventilation that will lead to a varying amount of CO2 that is eliminated or not eliminated, and that's going to affect your pH. So in pressure control, you have more control over eliminating the risk of barotrauma, um, but less control over your variances in your blood gases. Where in volume control, you have very high control over your blood gases, but limited control 
control over your varying pressures that might lead to barotrauma. Okay, so that's kind of the key things to know right off the bat in regards to um, pressure control and volume control ventilation. Two different modes of mechanical ventilation. Most modes are either based off of volume or pressure and you're going to be able to, you have to know what varies when you're setting a pressure versus what varies when you're setting a volume. And it's very simple. If you're setting volume, if you're setting volume, pressure varies. If you're setting pressure, volume varies. Okay. And know what that means for you and your patient. Okay. That's the key. Know what that means for your patient and what you need to be on lookout for when it comes to those things. Okay. So let me recap real quick here and then we're going to wrap it up. Cycle is the variable that ends inspiration. Trigger is the variable that begins inspiration. It can be time cycled on the vent side. It can be patient. I'm sorry. It can be time triggered on the vent by time, or it can be patient triggered via pressure flow or volume. There's also limits. There's things that are not going to be exceeded during the inspiratory phase and the vent is going to control these limits based off of what mode we're in as we learn more about each of those modes. And when it comes to volume and pressure, when you're in volume control, pressure will vary. Volume is set. When you're in pressure control, pressure is set. Volume will vary, which means your ABGs might also vary. Okay. Look forward to seeing you in the future uh, sessions where we start breaking down specific modes of mechanical ventilation. And I thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. If you don't have notifications turned on, please turn them on so you know when I put up a new video so you can see the next video that is going to break down CMV versus AC. And if you don't know what those stand for, then you definitely need to be aware for that video when it comes posted. Best wishes. 